Bechikucha 266, Manga Mania, How to Draw Japanese Comics. As someone who is a Westerner currently trying to develop a manga style, and as this book clearly uh, shows, it's not as easy as simply drawing Western characters with big eyes and small noses. Uh, So this is a book I bought when I was a kid, still at school. Um, Christopher Hart is the name on the cover, although he does almost none of the art, and I only realised this like a week ago. Um, That always bugged me as a kid, why the art is so violently inconsistent. Some of it's good, some of it's awful, Um, and I think this book is ultimately a cautionary tale on not just buying any book you can see. Um, The list of contributors is actually on the contents page. Special shout out to Svetlana Chimakova, because I think she gets it. She can draw manga, no one else apparently. I don't want to be too hard on this book, but I do want to make it clear that while I think it does have some value, I'm probably never going to review a worse book. It does try to give you an overview of the manga industry and how to draw, you know, things as simple as the face of a young child and things as complicated as as a a full-on kaiju battle in a city. And it pretty much misses the point, I'd say, 80% of the time. I think, you know... The body copy that Christopher Hart writes is its really a case of do as I say, not as I show. It's good knowledge to be had about a, a wide variety of things. I think this is one of the stronger pages. When I was flicking through this book as a kid, this is definitely one of the things I saw. But one of the biggest issues this book has is, I've said it before and I'll say it again, bad colouring makes art worse. The colouring in this book is a crime. <laughs> crime against nature, not quite bad enough to be a war crime. Um, and, you know, they try to explain things like poses and action scenes, but they do it without understanding how they work. You know, background action lines are essential. Uh, they talk about things like hair, but don't know how hair sits on manga characters' heads. There's such an underlying principle of applying uh, Japanese iconography on top of Western character concepts. It it, you, you you just know if you've ever read manga, it's, it doesn't work. This is one of the better pages. I think this is probably uh, that lady whose name I've already forgotten. I mentioned her. I've seen stuff that looks like this in the manga I've read, right? So, but um, there's not a lot of that going on in this book. Um, and again, the colouring hurts. The value of this book is in the overview it gives you about the manga industry. It, it effectively is a book aimed at small children and it will help educate you in general terms about what manga artists do, how they do it, why they do it. This is definitely the work of that Russian lady. Um, her elf characters look like manga characters. Uh, her spacing of the eyes, the relationship of the nose to the mouth and the chin, the way she shapes the cheek... She has read manga, and I think she's a fan. It's indicative in her work, and I think this is the kind of stuff you can look at and you can directly reference, and you might get something out of it. And all throughout this book, it's also it's, it makes the broad things you find in your average how-to-draw book. It talks about things like light and shadow and perspective, and uh, you know it's good to get a knowledge of anatomy. But it, like most how-to-draw books, doesn't dwell on any of these things in a way where you'll actually learn how to draw. But an excellent example of the value in this book is the idea that manga characters should be instantly recognisable as good or bad from the way their eyes are shaped. This book is smart enough to know that, but not smart enough to represent it in a way that is... They, They really should have just used examples from real manga. It would have helped a lot. You know, there's even a section towards the end that's just about how to draw pretty girls. But this is just a a Western um, proportioned woman with big eyes and a small nose. That doesn't make her a manga character. Not really. There's more to it than that. Uh, And, you know, this is the kind of kaiju battle stuff I'm talking about. It shows you the stages the artist goes through to get to the end in a way that is fundamentally not very helpful. Um... You know, the only real way to learn to draw is to draw. And the purpose of these books is to help you make less mistakes and to kind of maybe come at what you do from a smarter starting place, but you still have to put the work in. You know, again, this is a great example of of good advice in a bad book. Don't say it, show it. You should always let the imagery do the talking, not the characters, right? And 
manga is far more likely to have excellent visual narrative than a superhero comic where the characters tell you what they're doing as they do it. Looking at you, Stanley. You should, when reading this book, extrapolate what they say and consider if you think it has value as an opposed to just assuming that they know what they're talking about. Uh, this is the couple of pages on composition and I think composition composition is the most important thing, thing there is in a comic book because this is how you make images dynamic and dynamic images are what make people buy your comic book instead of someone else's. They have to, especially manga, people have to think what you're doing is cool. Now, Christopher Hart, the man whose name is on the front of this book, this is his artwork. This is his contribu contribution to a how to draw manga book as he explains uh, in broad terms, you know, what you could do in Japan if you wanted to make money or what you could do in, in, in general terms as an illustrator if you wanted to take money. He's make money. He's very obviously a cartoonist. And no one who's contributed to this book, dare I say, has contributed to the manga industry in any way, shape or form. So this is why I question how much you want to put into this book. At the end, uh, there is actual examples of real manga, as Christopher Hart, I believe, is conducting an interview with one of the Western publishers at the time of some of you know, the, the bigger names you will have heard of. And if they'd incorporated some of this artwork through the book, it would have helped soften the blow of whether this is a good book or not, or what you as a kid or uh, just someone who's interested in learning more about manga can extrapolate from this book. So to summarize, um, there's a lot of good information in this book and a lot of bad art. You can learn a lot if you listen to what is said and do pretty much the opposite of what is shown, with the exception of uh, it will be obvious when the artwork is good. Let's put it that way. If you if you know what Naruto is, if you know what Sailor Moon is, if you know what Dragon Ball Z is, if you've heard of Gundam or My Hero Academia or Demon Slayer, you will not have trouble figuring out where the quality of this book lies. I know for a fact you can get this for free online, and that's what I'd recommend you do if you want to have a closer look at this car crash of a book. Uh, <laughs> I was intending not to be too cynical, and honestly, I think I, I've met my, my goal. I will be continuing to draw manga in the shadows, and I will review what I believe is a better how to draw manga book next week. I will see you then. That's the end of Pitch Kucha 266.